In this lecture, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about antiderivatives. So we've reviewed um, some of our antiderivative rules. Um, we've talked about how to find the most general antiderivative. Now I want to do some more um, problems where we find specific um, antiderivatives given some additional information. And we'll also look at um, a couple of problems where we have some context um, to our functions. So here um, we're given the second derivative. So we're given f double prime of x is negative 2 plus 12x minus 12x squared. And we're also given this information about a y value of the function and a y value of the first derivative um, at 0. So the first thing that I need to do if my goal here is to find f is to find f prime of x. So just like when we um, wanted to find the second derivative, when we started with f, I had to first find f prime and then use that to find f double prime. To find the antiderivative um, f from f double prime requires me to find two antiderivatives, f prime and then f. So first I find um, f prime of x, which is going to be negative 2x plus 12x squared over 2, I'm using antiderivative rules here, minus 12x cubed over 3, plus some constant c. Then I can simplify this a little bit. I have negative 2x plus 6x squared minus 4x cubed plus c. And then if I can solve for c in this step, that'll help me when I go on to find f of x. So notice that we have this piece of information that f prime of 0 is equal to 12. So I know that f prime of 0, if I plug in 0 for all of these, well these are all going to be 0, is c. f prime of 0 is 12, so that means c must be equal to 12. So I know that f prime of x must be negative 2x plus 6x squared minus 4x cubed plus 12. Okay, but my goal is to find f, so I need to take the antiderivative again. So I have negative 2x squared over 2 plus 6x cubed over 3 minus 4x to the 4th over 4 plus 12x plus some constant, I'm going to call it d. Okay, so let me simplify this. Negative x squared plus 2x cubed minus x to the 4th plus 12x plus d, and I need to solve for d to get my final answer for f. So now I need to use the second piece of information which, set, excuse me, which says that f of 0 is equal to 4. So f of 0, well if I plug in 0 for x, all of these terms will be 0 except for d, so I'll have f of 0 equals d, so 4 must be equal to d. So this means that my final answer has to be f of x is equal to negative x squared, plus 2x cubed, minus x to the fourth, plus 12x, plus 4. So I'm just going up here to write our final answer. Okay. So the fact that um, this value on the right hand side ended up being our constant was just because um, the rest of these terms ended up going to zero when we plugged in this value. So that sometimes happens, but that doesn't always um, have to happen. So we'll want to look at a few more examples. So um, in this next example, we're trying to do something a little bit different. We've got some information that's given to us not as a point, but in terms of this tangent line. So we're told that we want to find a function f such that f prime of x is equal to x cubed. So that already allows us to find our um, general form of f. But then we're also told that the line x plus y equals 0 is tangent to the graph of f. So we're going to have to get some information out of this. So let's see, if I have f prime of x is equal to x cubed, then I know f of x must be x to the fourth over 4 plus c. Um, but I need to introduce um, some additional information to find c. So if this line is tangent to my graph, well that's equivalent to the line y equals negative x being one of my tangent lines. So notice that the slope here is negative 1, I remember the first derivative is slope function, so we can find where the slope is negative 1 by setting negative 1 equal to x cubed. So we find that at negative 1, we would have a slope of negative 1. Okay, so what else? Well, we know that this tangent line would we don't know exactly what our graph looks like, but we know that the tangent line and our graph, if this is my point, um, let's say A, 
f of a will lie um, on my tangent line as well as on my function f. So if I plug x equals negative 1 into my tangent line, I know y equals 1 is the corresponding y value. So negative 1, 1 is where the tangent line has this equation. Well now we know that this point lies on the curve, so we know that f of negative 1 is equal to 1. So this information will help us solve for c. So I know that f of negative 1 equals negative 1 to the fourth over 4 plus c. f of negative 1 is 1, so I've got 1 equals, well negative 1 to the fourth is a positive 1. So this means c is 3 fourths. So we get our final answer is that f of x is x to the fourth over 4 plus 3 fourths. So it has the property that the derivative is x cubed and that this line is tangent to our graph f at the point negative 1, 1. Okay. So sometimes we have to um, derive the additional information that we need to find c instead of it being given to us. Here we had to figure out that this was the point that we needed. Okay. So what else can we do with these problems? Well, oftentimes we're trying to find the position of a particle given information about the velocity or maybe information about the acceleration. Remember that if s of t is position, then v of t equals s prime of t is velocity, and a of t equals v prime of t equals s double prime of t is acceleration. So if I'm given, as I am in this example, the acceleration function, which is 10 sine t plus 3 cosine t, that's like being given the second derivative. So I'm going to have to find the first derivative and then use the first derivative to find my position function. So notice that I could write this as s double prime of t is 10 sine t plus 3 cosine t and I have these two pieces of information that are going to help me solve for my constants. So first I find my first antiderivative, s prime of t. Well this is going to be 10 negative cosine t, because the derivative of cosine is negative sine, plus 3 sine t, plus some constant c. Okay. Well I don't have any um, information here about s prime, I only have two pieces of information about s. So I need to go ahead and find s and then use these two pieces of information to solve for c and d. So I do the antiderivative again, I'm going to have negative 10 sine t, since the derivative of sine is cosine, plus 3 and then negative 3, um, let's see, cosine t, plus ct plus d. Okay. So we have those two different constants. I will use this information first, help me solve for one of them. S of 0 equals, well if I plug in 0 for t, sine of 0 is 0, so that term will go away. I'll have negative 3 cosine 0 plus, well c times 0 will be 0, plus d. I know that cosine of 0 is 1, so this would be negative 3 plus d, and s of 0 is 0. So I see d must be equal to 3. Okay. So it allowed me to solve for one of my constants. So now I know s of t is negative 10 sine t minus 3 cosine t plus ct plus 3. And so now I need to use the second piece of information to help me solve for c. So I have s of 2 pi equals, well if I plug in 2 pi for t, sine of 2 pi we know is 0, so that's going to go away. I'll have negative 3 cosine 2 pi plus c times 2 pi plus 3. Um, I know that cosine of 2 pi is 1, so this is just going to be negative 3 plus 2 pi c plus 3. Those are going to cancel. And I also know that s of 2 pi is 12, so I can put that on this side. So I can see that c is going to end up being 12 divided by 2 pi, or being 6 over pi. So putting these pieces of information together, I can see that uh, my position function, s of t, would be negative 10 sine t minus 3 cosine t plus 6 over pi t plus 3 we get this final piece of information. Okay. So this is um, often the, the kind of thing we have to do, find multiple antiderivatives and then use some additional information to solve for our constants so we can get a unique answer. 
So we're just going to look at one more um, example here. Now we've got a, a word problem where we're interested in finding some, some distances and velocities. So here we're told that a stone is dropped from the upper observation deck of a tower um, that's 450 meters above the ground. And we're interested first in finding the distance of the stone above the ground at time t. So we make a couple of assumption, um, excuse me, assumptions when we're doing a problem like this. We assume that the only force that is affecting the um, downward acceleration of our stone is gravity. So we start with assuming that our acceleration, and this is talking about meters, in meters per second, is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So I have um, this information. What else do I know? Well, I know my initial height is 450 meters, so I have s of 0. Um, and if this stone is just dropped, that means that my initial velocity is 0 meters per second. So I'm going to use those two pieces of information to help us find um, an equation for s of t. So v of t, remembering that this is s double prime of t and v of t is s prime of t, is going to be our antiderivative of a, so we're going to have negative 9.8t plus c. Now using that v of 0 is 0, we can get that c has to be equal to 0. So I have v of t is just negative 9.8t. And then I look for um, s of t, so that's going to be negative 9.8t squared over 2 plus d. And now I can use that s of 0 is equal to 450 to help us solve for d. So if I plug in 0, for t, I've got s of 0 is 450 equals d. So I see that s of t is equal to negative 4.9 t squared plus 450 um, meters would be the units for that position. Okay, so this is the, the distance above the ground after t seconds in meters. So if I want to answer the question, how long does it take my stone to reach the ground, well, what is the um, height or what is the distance above the ground when it's on the ground? Well, it would be a height of 0. So I would need to solve for where 0 is equal to negative 4.9 t squared plus 450. So I'd have negative 450 divided by negative 4.9 is t squared. And then t is just going to have to be the square root of that. So t is going to be the square root of 450 over 4.9, where we wouldn't use the negative square root because we're talking about time. So the numbers don't work out super nice um, here, so we'd have to um, use a calculator. And we'd find that this is about 9.583 seconds would be the time um, to reach the ground. If I wanted to know with what velocity it strikes the ground, I'd have to use this time and plug it into v. So this would be that v of 9.583. And that's going to give us, when we plug it in to, let's see, our v equation right here, negative 9.8 times 9.583 is going to give us about negative 93.915 meters per second. And it makes sense that our velocity there would be negative since we have a downward velocity, since it's going towards the ground. Okay. So when we're looking at these problems, we have to think about um, which of these three different equations we need to use to answer the question. We're just going to look at one more um, example uh, of this type. So this is just a little modification on that previous problem. Instead of just being dropped, the stone is thrown downward with a speed of 5 meters per second. So now instead of having an initial um, velocity of 0, the initial velocity is negative 5 meters per second. And our initial height is still 450 meters. So we would start off with our acceleration, or our second derivative of position here, as negative 9.8. S prime of t is going to be negative 9.8t plus c. But now using this information here, we'll have a different whoops, value for c than we had before. So s prime of 0 is negative 5 equals, well, let's see, we'll have negative 9.8 times 0 plus c. So c is going to be negative 5. So s prime of t will be negative 9.8t minus 5. Take the antiderivative again, we're going to have negative 9.8t squared over 2 minus 5t plus d. 
And since our initial height is 450, we see that s of 0 is d, so 450 is d. So we have s of t is negative 4.9 t squared minus 5t plus 450 meters as our position at time t. So if we wanted the time um, for our stone to reach the ground in this case, we're going to be setting 0 equal to negative 4.9 t squared minus 5t plus 450. So we would have to use the quadratic formula here. But again, the numbers don't happen to come out nicely in this example. So if we made use of a calculator, we would see that t is equal to about 9.09 .09 seconds and negative 10.1069 seconds. But we would get rid of that negative answer and we would just be concerned with the positive answer because that's the only thing that makes sense um, in the context of this problem. So we'd see that it would take about 9.09 .09 seconds for the stone to reach the ground. So we'll probably look at maybe one more example from this section in class. Um, but the more practice you do with these antiderivative problems, um, the more comfortable you'll, you'll be doing this sort of backwards problem versus the derivative problem that we've been working on. Um, let me know if you have any questions on anything.